Hey, my name is Adora Spitalk, and this is a video for all of you education reform noobs, not that I'm using that term in an offensive way, but just that you know that you would like to improve education and you want to know what issues there are and what side you should be on. Well, first we start off with, I want to make education better. That, I think, is really at the core of education reform. However, there's a lot of debate about that term reform itself. Do we say reform, or is that not a complete transformation enough? Shall we say revolution, because that sounds way more hardcore? Or is revolution too extreme, and do we really mean gradual change? So there's all of that. To what degree are you taking your desire to reform, or revolutionize, or transform, destroy and rebuild? There are all kinds of variations, so just think about that with the term reform. As a general rule of thumb, though, whenever people say anything that is like revolution, transform, change, whatever, it's all essentially the same thing. It'll be a lot of the same actions being talked about. So word choice in this case is not so important. Now, we go first to one of the big issues, which is standardized testing. So standardized testing could include stuff from the college board that we high school students deal with a lot, such as the SAT, SAT subject tests, APs, and all of those. So standardized testing. It could also mean all of your state tests. So things like here in Washington State, the MSP, the HISP, in other places, uh, there are those own acronyms, so state tests and college board. Then there's also standardized testing like on Scantron sheets within class, but for the purposes of this little explanation, we have these two kinds, and some people are extremely opposed to both. Some people love both, some people love one, some people are extremely opposed to one. So think about state tests. What is the purpose of state tests? Teacher accountability. Um, that brings into mind a whole other issue, which is teachers, how much autonomy. So, do you think that teachers should be allowed to choose their own curriculum to design how they work with students? Or do you believe that that should be something come up with by a principal or by a superintendent of a district or even higher levels such as the superintendent of state education or at the federal level? Which brings me to another issue which is who makes the decisions anyway? Well. We start off here at the Department of Ed, right, so for the purposes of concise and for that as DOE, and that's at the federal level. So federal government, cabinet position, woo. So Secretary of Education is Arnie Duncan. Now the Department of Education, though, its powers are actually somewhat limited because, as you may know, there's a huge debate over, oh, how big is government getting and stuff like that. So people are not always a fan of decisions being made at the federal level. As a result, a lot of the power of the Department of Education lies more in the carrot and the stick. That is, that they can say, we'll give you a big grant of money if you do A, B, and C, or we'll take away a lot of money if you don't do A, B, and C. Perfect example, no child left behind. That's more the stick than the carrot, saying if you don't meet these measurements, uh, these benchmarks, that is, in state testing, then there goes your money. Now, as a result of No Child Left Behind, you'll see a lot of this state testing stuff happening and a lot of preparation for state testing, which brings me back to standardized testing. When you're preparing students for standardized tests, you might say, well, they're learning valuable content information that they'll need later on in life, whatever. But at the same time, it also uh, people also say if you're drilling and killing, then you're really not building an authentic love of learning, and the skill of figuring out what thing to bubble in is not something that is authentic learning. Now, all I say, I don't want to take too strong of a stance on this, because this is more an education video about the education reform issue than my opinions, but I have to say that if the life that we're going into is one with A through E multiple choice options, that we're being prepared for a very strange life. So, Department of Education, that's at the federal level, then you have your State Departments of Education. So, State Departments of Education, like at the federal level, can only do so much. They can't necessarily dictate to an individual classroom, hey, you need to do this or that. Their power kind of percolates down through the school districts. So, school districts are where a lot of decisions happen, actually. You have your superintendent, your board of trustees usually, different school districts are managed in different ways. Well, your school districts, you have your schools, so everyone knows about your teachers, your principals, and then you have your individual classroom. So, people ask, why hasn't everything that should be done gotten done yet? I realize that grammar was messed up. 
Well, if you think about it, you can say, start off by going to the Department of Education at the federal level and say, hey, I want to do this project. But they may say, we might be able to give you $3 million to this project or offer it in the form of grants to schools that participate, but we really can't force them to participate. Then you have your State Department of Education and they might say sort of the same thing or your school district might say well we're leaving that up to the teachers themselves so you go to the school, talk to the principal again, this might play into the whole teacher autonomy thing and going to every single individual classroom across America that'll take you a little while. So school reform, you have lots of big issues but lots of small localized control not to mention a lot of issues that may not work the same way across the board because when you have a country as big as we are, obviously what works in Washington State may not work in Mississippi and vice versa. That is education reform in a very incomplete nutshell. So I highly encourage you to get informed, look at all sides of the issue. I didn't even mention teacher unions and parents and issues around lobbying and education and companies. There are so many facets to this amazing, wonderful issue. But I think that the really important thing to remember is in the quest to make education better, make sure that you're always thinking about the students above all. So the one thing that I would like to just add as a really, really big overarching theme, student voice. Because if education is a service and a preparation for our lives, then the real accountability is not to politicians, it's not to our parents, it's not even to teachers. The real accountability is to our futures. So invest in student voice, ask us what we think about our education, get the discussion started, go to facebook.com slash the student union or slash groups slash the student union. Get on the discussion on Twitter with hashtag stewvoice and I look forward to seeing what insights you can bring to the crowded education reform table.